Good evening and welcome. This is News First Primetime News, where the people come first. I'm Michaela Fernando and joining us via Zoom is sign language interpreter Brian DeCruz. Before we head into more news in detail, here are a look at your headlines. News First Headlines Main Sponsor Valuable Finance Best Finance Company to be increased after midnight. Long queues for kerosene and gas cylinders. <laughs> Frustrated citizens take to the streets. <laughs> People seek divine intervention for mounting wars. India's High Commissioner visits the North. Sri Lanka to expedite free trade agreement with China, while India gains more control over the energy sector. Oil rigs spotted in the seas off Trincomalee's Marble Beach. News First Headlines Main Sponsor Valuable Finance Best Finance Company the cost of a 50 kilogram bag of cement has been increased up to 1850 rupees it's the third time that cement prices have gone up in three months a cement bag which was sold at 1375 rupees had gradually gone up to 1500 rupees before the latest increment from the frying pan to the fire In addition to this, transport costs have increased after the government increased fuel prices this week. Bus fares are to be increased from midnight tomorrow following a request by bus associations. Transport Minister Diluma Munugama met representatives of bus associations at the Transport Ministry today. During our discussion, bus owners also said it's not practical to provide fuel subsidies. There is a possibility that bus fares will be increased from tomorrow night after we submit a proposal for cabinet approval. We will allow bus fares to be increased in line with the CPC's increment of fuel prices. We expect bus fares to go up by about 2 rupees. Most buses won't be running tomorrow. We can't run our buses by ignoring all these issues. This is what is usually followed when the cost of diesel goes up. Bus owners can't bear it when diesel prices are increased. All buses operating within a province or between provinces will keep running until tomorrow night even if we have to face losses. Bus fares will increase at midnight tomorrow. Will train fares be increased? Sri Lanka Railway says it has made a request to increase the fares of train tickets. Its general manager, Dominika Jayasundara, said a request will be made for an increment that is similar to bus fares. He added that the request will be sent to the finance ministry after obtaining the advice of the transport ministry. Three-wheeler fares increased. Three-wheeler fares have also been increased due to the increase in fuel prices. Our correspondent reported that three-wheel drivers had queued up outside a private company in Kirulapana to adjust their taxi meters. Will school transport service providers increase their rates? We will have to increase the fares by about 40% if we don't get any other alternative solution. We propose to the government to provide us with a subsidy for 20 litres of fuel. How long will power cuts last today? 
The Ceylon Electricity Board has received permission to impose power cuts to 3 hours and 15 minutes today. How will power cuts be imposed in the country? The Electricity Consumers Association has criticized the system of imposing power cuts based on groups. We are facing many injustices due to power cuts. They declare some areas under groups A, B, C and D. But on another day, these areas are under groups P, Q, R and S. For example, the area falling under group P is moved to groups A, B, C or D on another day. This is confusing. Even if we memorize the entire list, they change it the next day. They are cheating us and providing electricity to the VIPs and ministers. <laughs> Isn't there a solution to the gas crisis? These were sentiments of protesters who were involved in demonstrations at the Kadavata town. The Colombo Candy Road was blocked due to the protest. The protesters claim that gas dealers are concealing stocks without selling them. The police arrived at the location of the protest. Police visited the gas dealership store with the protesters afterwards. Lorries carrying gas cylinders were seen at the location. The protesters dispersed after being promised that gas cylinders will be sold to Long queues of people were seen to purchase gas cylinders in Koskoda today. Gas cylinders were distributed after a new stock had arrived on a lorry. Many people who queued up to purchase gas cylinders at the Badula town had to return home empty handed. A gas dealership in the Anuradhapura town had not received sufficient amount of gas cylinders. Gas cylinders were distributed with the intervention of the police at a queue in Vanduraba. Litro Gas Lanka says it's distributed 125,000 gas cylinders across the country today. The company said it has not increased gas prices. Litro Gas has said the people can inform them if gas cylinders are being sold at a high rate. Sri Lanka has been facing several issues, especially on the economic front over the last few months, and this has forced people to take to the streets, not only for protests, but to stand in queues to purchase essential items as well. In fact, the situation is such that queues have now become a common sight, not just in Colombo, but in other parts of Sri Lanka as well. Today, we decided to tour Colombo and to find out what the situation in the streets are. A few minutes into our journey, we came across long queues for kerosene near the Sugudu Dasa Stadium. Despite heavy rain, people continued to stand in line. 
let me just take you along this long queue of people extending from this uh, filling station these people have gathered here because they want to purchase kerosene in order, in order to cook their meals let's speak to a few people and it, and to identify why they have gathered here and what brought them to these queues <laughs> A long queue for kerosene was seen at a filling station in Orugodavatta. Making the mother lamb to die, not to a sepai, I put a duka, I could eat time. Ape Ganda Padia, Pitia Katai, Lam Teltikata, Gas, Sekatai, Varai, Davati, stop, but a kidney, Monaka and the Begolo, Ilan Ekeruda, Hunda Ekeruda, Dila, Begolanti and the Kianda, Paula Kakatuela, Mulu, Rata Pavina Sakarama. A long queue was also seen to purchase kerosene in Grand Pass today. Dollar nasty girl, suit girl, sell and girl. Abi dukki din, abi the dollar nasty girl. Abi the naira katte, abi the commission kya hui? Pal me kya kada bori kine? Mooda mooda na mooda hui kine. Chera kara ne mukka log auru. What is the situation at fuel stations? Although there was a record increase in fuel prices, long queues were witnessed at fuel stations across the island today as well. According to our correspondent, certain fuel stations were closed down. Many fuel stations in Poland Narua were closed down last evening. Fuel was only sold at the IOC filling stations in Kaduruvela. Many fuel stations in Anuradhapura were closed down while diesel was only available at one fuel station. Diesel ka kanu yaani me aranga na kano le din din na diesel na battery ka kanu battery le kanu din din na na mua mua le karan na mahatya balandu ko na paandar tu nee na mam poli me ni diesel value na ki wada diesel ne ko me di din karan ni ko ya te ande vidhi kud ne rasa wagera ande vidhi kud ne ande bondad ne geval lala pras ne paale ko vidhi ni di ni ne paale ko ne ni di ohi ano rat. There was no diesel available at the fuel station at Katukale Candy today. Many people were left helpless. They passed up with them. They then name him our rival. That's our today's mag. Boru at Kerala, Tianwa, Durna, Bedua, Kerala. From Pune, Boru at Karan. Sahane at Tianwa. Because petty game was Sahane. No, Beduna, no, Beduichi, Telti, a gun at Tianwa. Hey, no. Hey, guy, are you sure you're going to pass the line? Me, my mother, minutes ago, picked up no. There was also no fuel available at the fuel station in Katugastotam. However, people stood in line in the hopes that they will eventually receive some fuel. Dembalanna Mama, I am standing in this line from 5 in the morning because the minister said that the fuel issue will be resolved by yesterday. When I was close to getting fuel, they ran out of fuel. What can we do now? The people are helpless. Look at how the people are suffering. I would like to ask this government to leave with your dignity intact before the people grab you by your necks and throw you out. Nambu piting yane ka hondai yela. The various issues faced by the people have turned into frustration, forcing people onto the streets. This group of people are protesting in Rajagiriya regarding multiple issues faced by the people. This includes the shortage of essential items and the soaring cost of living as the rupee depreciates. The protesters lit candles along Parliament Road in Rajagiriya and held placards during the demonstration. So sad that one of the most powerful presidents in the world and a government who has all the power, two-thirds of people, 6.9 million voted for them, there's a two-third in the parliament, 20th amendment, all the so-called professionals and they have failed the nation. Three more years is a long time to wait for elections. I don't think this country will last for even three more weeks. So please hear our voice 
and give it to a group, a team. There are enough people who can govern and please leave. We want a better life, better life in terms of basic needs. At this point, we don't have any basic needs. These people have been coming to the streets day after day in peaceful protest. They represent no political party. This is a desperate cry from the people, demanding the government answers to questions that they are duty bound to provide. I am Nisal Suryarachi, reporting for News First. Several protests were held across the country today, demanding the solutions to the multiple crises faced by the people. A group of youth gathered opposite the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic and staged a silent protest. A silent protest was held in Kiribatgoda town by a group of small-scale businessmen. They demanded for solutions to the burning issues faced by the country. <laughs> A group of representatives of the Samagi Janabala Vegya visited the Nachidua Tammennagala Raja Mahaviharaya in Anuradhapura and pleaded with the gods. A group of youth pleaded to the gods at the Kaliamman Kovil in Modura, seeking an end to this administration that continues to make the people suffer. A group visited the Nachidua Tammanagala Raja Mahaviharaya in Anuradhapura and pleaded with the gods. The oil tanks that were purchased for 250,000 pounds is an important asset to us, especially at a time like this. We can use these oil tanks without any issue. As a youth movement, we are ready to work towards sending this government home. Another group pleaded to the gods regarding the fuel price hike, power outages and the rise in cost of living at the Kadavara Devalaya in Kadavara, Kalaoya. What is that? More headline making news follows after this short commercial break. Stay tuned to News First. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Register today for a Zoom workshop on new technology in Singhala. Win the world with innovations. On the 24th of March at 3 p.m. Register by 0777-600-20. Organized by Slit Institute. Tech Bus. Main sponsor. Slit Knowledge University. Challenging convention and redefining education. Welcome back to the news. A jogging track that was built in Marthale under the government's policy of vistas of prosperity and splendor was declared open today. Army Commander General Shavendra Silva declared open a jogging track that was built in Marthale. The jogging track was constructed with the financial support from the Urban Development Authority. The Army had supported the construction of the track that cost 45 million rupees. This was yet another project under the vistas of prosperity and splendor policy of President Gotabe Rajapaksa in the historic city of Marthale. Such projects will be implemented by the Urban Development Authority throughout the island. The 
Meanwhile, the decision to increase fur prices has affected the fisheries industry. With many boats docked on the shores, fisheries associations say many fishermen are losing their livelihoods. Many boats were docked in the Nigambo Lagoon today. Fishermen in the eastern region say they can't bear the full price hike. Fishermen in the eastern region say they can't bear the full price hike. The Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka inquired into the issues faced by the families of fishermen in Sri Lanka. Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, His Excellency Gopal Bagle distributed food and essential equipment worth 5,000 rupees each to 600 families of fishermen in the Jaffna district. Many of you would have heard of Neighborhood First, our foreign policy, Neighborhood First, our neighbors come first for us. Even in Neighborhood First, Sri Lanka occupies a central place. Yes, India and Sri Lanka are two different countries, two sovereign countries. But as civilization, we are brothers, we are sisters, we are one family. And therefore, it is natural for government of India to think, to work and to come forward when there is some difficulty to be addressed, some challenge to be overcome in Sri Lanka. The Hindu newspaper reports that India's Adani group has signed an agreement with Sri Lanka on Friday to build two power plants in the north. The report notes that the proposed projects have raised questions in some quarters on the apparent lack of transparency in an international agreement. The proposed power plants are to be built in Mana and Poonarin to generate a combined capacity of 500 megawatts at a cost of 500 million US dollars. The Indian media report mentions that the Ceylon Electricity Board has already signed a memorandum of understanding with India's Adani Green Energy Limited for the projects. But the Sri Lankan government has only said that a cabinet subcommittee has approved a 500 million US dollar investment project involving India's Adani group. Sri Lanka and India signed an agreement this week to form a joint venture named Trincomalee Power Company Limited to build a solar power plant in Sampur. It's the second time that Sri Lanka has inked an agreement with India in a week. The solar power plant agreement was signed between India's state-run NTPC Limited and the Ceylon Electricity Board who would be shareholders in the joint venture. The Indian High Commission said the project is an important step in India's process of investing in Sri Lanka as agreed during Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa's visit to India last year. The solar power plant is to generate 100 megawatts of electricity. However, the people have not been informed about further details of this agreement, including how the ownership will be divided over the joint venture. The details revealed so far on these agreements are emerging from Indian entities and not the Sri Lankan government, which is responsible to the people. Although the Norachole coal power plant is one of Sri Lanka's main power generating sources, Chinese experts have to be brought down to the country to rectify any fault. Local electrical engineers say they haven't received passwords to run certain machines. As a result, China now has power to control the country's electricity sector. An agreement has also been signed with US-based New Fortress Energy to give them a 40% stake of the Yugadanavi power plant for 250 million US dollars. Lanka Indian Oil Company was allowed to be involved in the distribution of fuel in Sri Lanka without any reason. It was also allowed to gain control of the Trincomalee oil tank farm. As a result, India is now in a position to increase fuel prices in Sri Lanka's market. Against such a backdrop, what will be the fate of Sri Lanka's independence if India is allowed to gain control 
of power generation as well. The government is signing agreements hurriedly with India on the back of Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa's visit to India next Tuesday. Sri Lanka has received loans running up to 1.4 billion US dollars from India very recently. The Finance Minister's visit would be to follow up on another 1 billion US dollar loan that is to be offered by India. Basil Raja. The only alternative for the government is to sell national assets. This isn't one of Basil Rajapaksa's lands in the US. We oppose these arbitrary decisions to sign agreements and to betray the country. They are creating crises such as the shortage of fuel and dollars so that it affects the people and then they are selling the country's assets. By doing this, they are creating an impression in the people's minds that there is no other alternative. Basil Rajapaksa and his allies are carrying out a business. They are pocketing commissions from both both parties. They are selling ports and oil tanks and then selling the LNG power plant to the US. The latest addition to the list is the Sampur power plant. The power plant must be built according to Sri Lanka's national plan. They have no right to allow Sri Lanka to become a colony of their country after something happens. <laughs> While India is entering Sri Lanka's energy sector at an expedited rate and building cordial relations with many communities in the country, discussions on the Sri Lanka-China free trade agreement have come to the limelight. The Cabinet Subcommittee on Economic Way Forward has agreed to fast-track the next steps with the relevant stakeholders with regard to the China-Sri Lanka Free Trade Agreement. The Foreign Ministry stated that the three Cabinet Subcommittees which were appointed by the President to negotiate with China, Japan and the Middle East regions on economic matters met for the first time on the 9th and 10th of March. Sri Lanka continues to catch the eye of powerful countries in the world because of its strategic location and valuable resources. A driller rig that has been moving about close to the Trincomalee port reminds us of this fact. This is Marble Beach in Trincomalee. Anyone visiting this beach can spot this rig in the sea. What is this rig? It appears to be a rig that can be used for oil exploration. This rig was spotted in the seas off the Trincomalee coast a few months ago and according to our correspondents, the rig had been placed at certain locations in the deep sea periodically. We inquired on this matter from the commander of the Navy, Vice Admiral Nishantha Ulugetanna. He said that the rig was temporarily stopped in the seas of Trincomalee while it was on its way to its final destination. What is its purpose? It appears to be a deep sea driller dig, but what is it doing stopped in the Sea of Sri Lanka for many months now? Has permission been granted for this rig to be placed here? You can't beat someone who never quits. Sri Lanka's ambassador to Turkey, Mohammed Hassan, spoke to News First on the situation of Sri Lankans in Ukraine. The embassy in Turkey is currently accredited to Ukraine. There are 24 Sri Lankans in Ukraine. Some of them are in the homes of their relatives. Two of them have said they will leave Ukraine tomorrow. 64 Sri Lankans have left Ukraine so far to countries such as Poland, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia and Moldova. Ukraine, Poland, Ukraine, Hungary, Ukraine, Romania, Ukraine, Slovakia, Ukraine, Moldova, The Russian invasion of Ukraine entered its 18th day today. The UN says it has recorded more than 1,500 casualties, which includes the deaths of 42 children in the conflict. At least 579 people have been killed since the invasion on the 24th of February. Russian forces carried out an airstrike on a military training ground in the western city of Lviv. Eight missiles had been fired at the International Peacekeeping and Security Center. Lviv is only 80 kilometers away from the Polish border and is a destination for many Ukrainians fleeing the country. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has reacted to Russia's attempts to capture the capital, Kyiv. If they kill us all, they will enter Kyiv. If that is their goal, 
let them come. If they carry out carpet bombings and wipe off the historic memory of the entire region, the history of Kiev and Rus, the history of Europe, they could enter Kiev. The mayor of the city of Mariupol has said 12 days of Russian bombardment have killed 1,500 people in the area. Ukraine's deputy prime minister blamed Russia for obstructing people from leaving Mariupol, but Russia has denied those claims. The most difficult humanitarian situation has developed in Mariupol. Hundreds of thousands of people, including foreigners, are forcibly held by nationalists who, threatening physical violence, stop any attempts to leave the city. Ukraine's deputy prime minister has said about 13,000 Ukrainians were evacuated through humanitarian corridors yesterday. Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Petro Parolin has said the invasion indicates that the world is falling back into the past. He is widely viewed as the second most powerful man in the Catholic Church after Pope Francis. Taking a look at some local news, a silent candle protest to highlight and oppose the current crises faced by the people was staged in Mount Lavinia today. The protesters demanded solutions from leaders to the multiple crises faced by the general public of the country. The protesters held candles and placards along the Mount Lavinia road. In sports news, CHNFC beat the police sports club at the inter-club rugby league fixture today. The scores were level at halftime on five. However, CHNFC managed to come up on top at the final whistle. Police Sports Club scored 22 with three tries, two conversions and one penalty. While CHNFC scored 25 with four tries, one conversion and one penalty. Prime Minister Mahindu Rajapaksa and Shiranti Rajapaksa were among the spectators of the match. Sri Lanka's first Muay Thai championship organized by the World Boxing Council was held in Colombo yesterday. Mohamed Adal won the WBC Muay Thai Sri Lanka championship belt in his bout against Srimal Rodrigo in the main event. The World Boxing Council Muay Thai Championship 2022 was organized by WBC Sri Lanka. Several dignitaries, including Thailand's ambassador to Sri Lanka, Poj Hampol, were present. Yesterday's championship saw 11 intense bouts taking place in a packed Royal Mass Arena before the main event. Muay Thai fighters Srimal Rodrigo and Mohamed Adil faced each other in the main event that saw five rounds of intense sparring and striking. History was made as Mohamed Adil from Kandy was declared the WBC Sri Lanka Muay Thai champion. Me Jai Grahan hai, Mool Magaru, I master. Thank you, master. Me, thank you, Miran sir, uh, WBC Amitwa to Loko Nama. I am a Loko Puchan and a Kapi and Denua Lanka. International champion WBC. WBC Muay Thai says it plans to host a major event every two months to contribute to the promotion of tourism in Sri Lanka. And that is a wrap of primetime news. For all these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsfirst.org. Take care and good night.